Welcome back to episode two of an Unreal Engine design and world building series. Last week, we laid out the framework for this house project, and towards the end, it started to look pretty good. This week, I've been focusing a lot more on the internal spaces of the project and the kind of character that I wanted to convey. Along the way, I changed my mind a few times, I made a few mistakes, and I went back to the drawing board at a couple of places. But I think the outcome started to look pretty good towards the end of the week. So let's pick up where we left off last week and get stuck in. Here we go. Now let's start at the end of last week. We'd laid out the internals quite well and we had an idea of the kind of materials that we wanted. The first thing I did after this was to begin looking at some of the early spaces that were going to really give character and definition to the project and some of the furniture that would go inside them. Things like the kitchen and the living area. The first pass that I made of these was a little rough but was also quite fast just to kind of get an idea and it wasn't exactly what I decided to go for in the end. I began by laying out a few early furniture pieces, um, things like sofas and shelves and walls, and it was really just to get a feel for where I wanted things to go and the kind of size that they were going to be. I was in definite pursuit of a sci-fi aesthetic, and although I was quite a fan of some of the pieces like the kitchen, others weren't quite hitting the mark for me. Here in an early virtual reality run through, I, I think you could see that pretty clearly as I started moving through this space. I was fairly happy with the way that the kitchen area worked, but I definitely wasn't sold on elements of the house like the flooring material, for example, or the living space. You can see here as we move more towards these shelves that, uh, as a friend put it, looked quite Ikea-ish. I, I wasn't sure if they worked, and they definitely weren't sci-fi. They looked like something more out of a modern architectural visualization project. And that's definitely not what I was trying to go for. And let's not mention the fact that they were absolutely massive and in no way reachable at the top especially. As I was figuring out slowly for myself in VR. I also spent a lot of time on the floor area. You can see at the end of the last episode I'd settled on concrete on the floor, but I did explore a few other options as well. None of them were really doing it for me, they definitely weren't sci-fi. They felt like one large monolithic surface and there was none of that kind of detail or richness that you'd associate with a highly detailed house. See, one of the amazing things that technology lets us do is build detail and variety into our spaces and surfaces. You don't just have to have one plane. You can subdivide a surface and give it different areas and different levels of detail depending on what you want it to do. And I definitely wasn't giving it the treatment that it needed. So the first thing I did to turn this house around from looking like a bad Archvis project was to really focus on the sense of definition and detail and we started with the floors. So what I've done here is I've broken up the floors and constructed a trim sheet that I can use to build detail into it. It's just one texture cut up into a few different pieces and we can take it and place it where we need to to build a bit of detail. I used Substance Painter and Designer to build some new materials that would help us break up this floor further. Some metallic, some non-metallic, uh, some reflective, some not that reflective. And again, when you use these properly, it'll start marking out different spaces for different uses and start putting a bit of a break in between them so that the floor will look a lot more interesting. I used the same third UV channel dirt painting technique that I'd messed around with last episode as well to add a bit more dirt on top of the variety that we've already started to increase. This way it'll really look like it's been worn in and used and cleaned and you know missed some spots over the years. And I think it really adds a level of realism above just breaking up the materials that uh, you know, we're starting to see some of the AAA games do, but I'd like to bring to the smaller studios as well. And with that, the uh, floor retrofit was done. I think it looks a lot better than it did before. There's a lot more going on, and it's definitely a lot more sci-fi and panelized, without being too over the top, I think. You can see there I've chosen a slightly greener, interesting panel material for the kind of spaces you spend a bit of time in, and uh, just basic concrete um, for where you just be walking around and transiting through. After this, the next step was to start looking at the wall and shelving area that I designed previously. Now again, I think last time I hadn't really given this space the kind of definition that it needed. I just put some shelves into a slightly sunken area. Uh, this time I wanted to kind of make a reason for you to be there. 
So to contrast all of the man-made materials around, I decided to build some rock features into the wall, which will just be inlaid rock panels, and build some shelving around it. It was quite a fast rebuild process, but I think it brought a lot to the overall space and a lot of contrast. And uh, it's definitely much more in keeping with the uh, kind of sci-fi, slightly slick detailed theme that we're going with. Now, the next area that we're looking at is one that's often overlooked in real architecture as well as in game design. And that's the roofing. So typically for ceilings and roofs, you will see panels. If you're lucky, maybe a white surface. And in the real world, it's no different. Most of the time in commercial buildings, you'll see very cheap drop ceilings and in houses you'll see plasterboard and that's fine but when you're trying to get a space to direct a sense of emotion for a player or a viewer or even in the real world if it's a very powerful piece of architecture you need something more than that and so i explored a uh, a few different kind of panel ideas that would point you out towards the view by being very linear you can see there that i had a few different versions going on but in the end i settled on that one that has a bit of color there it's a basic panel that's just a kind of slightly offset uh, triangular shape. But what it does is it kind of draws the eye out towards the view and offers a sense of depth for the ceiling that wasn't there previously. And at this stage, we had really started to kind of transform the way we wanted the space to work. And I was getting ready to put everything inside UE4. So we began a retrofit process, which we'll have a look at now. Okay, well this one was slightly shorter than last week's montage, but it was the product of a lot of thought and technical decision behind it, and I think uh, it really has kind of helped the space work. A lot of times in projects you cross this threshold where it stops being an idea in your head and starts uh, kind of making sense with more than what you originally thought it would. I don't know if we've quite got there yet, but the first time I lit this space up was the first time that I started to think it might get there. Now, last thing I'm going to do is bring a couple of the doors in that you've seen in the 3D model. And then we're gonna jump back into VR and see how the space has changed. Okay, and we're back in VR now. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give this door a quick little push. And yep, that physics constraint is working just fine. Now, immediately these ceiling panels are pushing me towards the outside view and that's, uh, that's working really nicely. Give that door a quick close and yeah, Having lit up the uh, back of the rock wall panels, that is starting to look a lot better. I think the way the kitchen touches that uh, panelled floor area might need a bit of work, but this space that I think could be an office or a library is working surprisingly well with the simple square detail lighting in the floor coming up against those stark concrete walls. That looks really nice. I did a bit of work to the concrete as well to make it a bit more contrasted and reflective, and I think, I think it's uh, coming out really nicely and I am a big fan of these shelves so far. This sitting and living space is working a lot better now. This chair is quite large, it's kind of an oversized lounge chair and I quite like it, I think the colours work okay. And you'd be looking forward there to some kind of holographic television. I think again, the way you're kind of lowered down against the view is really nice and it's a much more successful space. I'm a big fan of this corridor now. It lights itself and the floor is really interesting. It definitely feels like its own kind of transition space. Next week, I'm hoping we can do a bit more with the bedroom area and obviously the bathroom as well. I've completely taken it out for now because I want it to be its own thing. But yeah, this, this uh, floor reflective area is looking great. That dirt is coming through. I've kept the bedrooms pretty simple for now. I think we'll do a bit more work to them in a future episode as well. But I'm not going to overdo these spaces, I'm going to think of them as kind of secondary spaces. Just to keep the scope within check and to make sure I can do this project uh, relatively quickly and make sure I get the most out of it. Again, looking back through the living area, and we're just going to give that door a quick push. This space was actually quite nice to be in. You really understood what it was for, and you can see there I'm quite happy with it. Right, well, that's where we are this week. 
I think I've been really happy with the progress that we've made. Although it's not been quite as much in terms of 3D modeling as last week, the decisions that I've made this week have really helped shape the way the project works and looks, and I think it's, uh, it's really moved forward in that respect. The thing that is absolutely lacking, I think, at the moment, the big glaring hole in the project, is the fact this entire house is designed to show you a view, and there isn't yet one. That's something that we're going to look at next week. I think I'm going to make the uh, outside space in 3D, and we're going to you know, have a kind of nice layered uh, landscape, vista almost, looking out. We're going to keep it pretty sci-fi, bit of nature, a few buildings. It should be pretty interesting. As well as that, I'll start looking at some of these secondary rooms, things like the bedroom, things like some bathrooms, and just trying to bring a bit more detail into the entire space. I'm really happy with the way it's starting to look in terms of its direction, but uh, yeah, there is a fair way to go still. And just like last week, uh, this series is still an experiment and I'm still trying to nail down the format. This episode is under half the length of the last one, and that is on purpose, just trying to compact things down a bit more. So please do leave a comment about what you think worked, what you enjoyed, as well, anything you don't think worked as well, and feel free to tell me, you know, I'm still trying to get this right and I really appreciate any input that you guys want to give. And don't forget, if you want to know anything in detail, just ask. I'll either address it in a future video or I'll leave a detailed comment or perhaps if enough people want to see it, we can even make a tutorial. So in the meantime, thanks very much for watching. Please do leave a like and if you want to subscribe, you know where that button is. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.